Hey guys, we are live and today we're doing something fun. This is the Sales Copywriting Content Marketing Hacks episode podcast, episode 66 or 67. Stu can't remember which one it is, <laughs> so I put that in there. But today we are talking about how COVID-19 is going to revolutionize our lives forever moving forward. And Stu, you were actually inspired by a cartoon that I uh, reposted yesterday or that I shared yesterday that I found from the marketoonist. You have that, that pulled up. Do you have that where you could show it real quick or, or I, I can show it real quick? Yeah, if you actually, have I'll it. just pull up. I'll pull up my page. Oh, I got it. I got it. Okay, show you it on your it? screen then. Yeah, it's fine. All right, let's do it. I've got it too, but there you go. So yes. This, I love that Tom Fishburne stuff at marketunist.com. You can subscribe and get those, but digital transformation is years away. I don't see our company having to change anytime soon. And then here comes COVID-19, whack. And like so I want, we wanted to talk today just about some of the ways that we think it's gonna <clears throat> change stuff uh, for business, personal, everything moving forward. Um, and I don't know if you, if you want to go first, Stu, or, or how you want to do this or, or what your thoughts yeah, are, but let, I, I've got some thoughts. Let me do this. Let me open it up with two things that happen throughout history. You okay. have a revolutionary product or change that completely changes everything from the industrial revolution, technology revolution, um let's talk about so things like yeah. things like the steam engine or yes. the cotton gin or the microchip printing press you know th those Domino's are pizza yeah those are revolutionary <laughs> products that change everything now yeah. let's think about but it also causes a disruption in yeah. things like 9 11 yeah that changed everything our world is different even though that's not a product or anything or a yeah it's an event service. it's an it's event, an event. It's an event yeah. just like this. COVID-19 is an event. And is it a complete disruption or will it create revolutionary change? And so w whenever you have revolutionary change, it, there is always a, a disruption that occurs. So for instance, let's think about the iPhone. Obviously a revolutionary product. It changed the way you and I do business, way we communicate, changes our, our social lives completely but it was kind of gradual that, yeah, oh, that yeah, some was, of these things are you know they're immediate some are immediate and some are gradual and they pick up speed over time this is making me think of when you you know it's the old thing of a of an airplane where an airplane you know is starting right here but if you change by six degrees once you get from you know california to or new york to out with hawaii if you're off by six degrees you've you've run into russia <laughs> yeah. uh, you and yeah. that's, I think, part of what's going on. For some people, it's a radical shift right now. For other people, it's a, it's a pop out of orbit that over the years is going to result in being in a totally different place as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, think about it this way. So the iPhone has made a lot of people rich, you know, completely by just having an app. So, for instance, yeah. the hotel industry, the largest hotel with the most hotel rooms, doesn't even own a hotel they have an app you know the largest taxi service don't own cars they have an app right so you know there there's a disruption that occurs somewhere you know whenever you you have these changes like this and so our question was where do you see that change occurring and disruption so for instance what we're all doing now is we may be using delivery services more because you don't feel like going shopping. Um, you or you're may, not allowed to. It's yeah, against the law to, to leave your right. house. Yeah. Or you're, you're no longer working at a place of work. Um, so you're working from home. So now you've equipped your home with this home office. But how, where does that disrupt commercial real estate? Now, will, will more companies say, you know what? I guess we really don't need this building anymore. We're just going to work from home, right? Oh, and, and maybe, by the way, we can use COVID as an excuse to declare bankruptcy and we can get out of our lease. Now, one thing I have seen with two kids that are still in school is online classes. 
Yeah. They, they are doing, I mean, that has been something that is already um, in the process of evolving, but now <clears throat> it has, boom, you have Mainstream. no choice. You have no choice. You are doing online classes if you're going to go to school. Yeah. So um, wh wh where are some other ones that, that you may see? That, that's kind of what this question is bringing on. Well, the big one, thinking about telecommuting, teletraining, telemeetings, um, A, it's mainstream. They talk about it all the time. Yes. B, it's causing companies to massively improve their infrastructure and underlying stuff so that they can deal with, with bigger numbers. You're also seeing a lot of discussion now about when we talk about infrastructure of going the last mile where it's out in the country, there's still a good percentage of people in the U.S. and around the world that do not have access to reliable high-speed internet and finding ways to bridge that last mile because it's like power. You know, yeah. power, we take power for, for granted, but there were people in the 50s and even in the 60s who didn't have electricity because they were part of that last mile. And then they finally got to them with rural cooperatives and things like that. But, but bridging that last mile so everybody's plugged in because the online economy and online connectivity is part of the brick and mortar um, economic system. You, it's, it's unavoidable now. I think another thing to look at though when you look at that is the hardware that it takes to do that too. I think you're gonna see like this. I use a Blue Yeti mic. I bet you their sales are going through the freaking roof. People who, who create all of the things that you need to be able to do it, really good webcams, I mean, and, and switchers and, and other stuff where people are getting more sophisticated. Like I used to have just a webcam built into my computer. Now I've got one, two, three webcams that I can use to do a multicam shoot. Um, there, there's all kinds of things that are going to happen with equipment to make it so that you can have a highly effective um, uh, online or uh, home studio and one of the things that will drive that also is the fact that now tv news it used to be tv news tv talk shows was everybody had to go to a studio you had a set you had a studio audience you had this thing that made you legit yeah. now you see people like whatever news channel you're watching there might be one person in the studio and everybody else is broadcasting from home. And it's hilarious to see what a crap job professionals in media are doing as far as their background, oh, their camera angle, yeah. their sound quality, all the things that, that we have kind of figured out, they haven't figured out yet. So we're now honestly on the same technological par with people in the mainstream media. And in some cases, we're ahead of them as far as our ability to deliver and, and do stuff. And, and so we need to really capitalize that. But you're going to see, in my opinion, a lot of people moving away from the mainstream media and, and little fiefdoms and experts and people really rising to the top. It's not going to, you know, with, um, do you have Roku? Do you have a Roku? Mm -mm. You know what a Roku is? Nope. Okay, well. There you go. <laughs> Roku is a is a is a set top box that that plugs in the internet that you can stream anything anywhere in the world, and you can get everything from Netflix to Amazon Video to to specialized channel. I mean, it's how it's how you turn any TV into a smart TV, but it's more than that because you can actually. I don't know exactly how to do it, but you can get your own Roku channel. You can huh. you know all these. It's going to get more and more dispersed. And so your ability to broadcast quality, high, high definition, high quality uh, video from your desk is going to make a huge difference and create massive opportunities for people as, as it just becomes more prevalent. Because it's like, I'm looking at this person who used to go in the studio and now they're sitting at home. You know, they're sitting there in their underwear. Yeah, just, doing, doing their own makeup. You, you, badly. You really, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's why I don't wear it. I just yeah, say, you know same what? Same here. I just, it is what it is. But well, I, I do think have, I have some blush over here I use. I know you do. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing with the, yeah, I just pinch my cheeks like this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Now I, I got that. Um, 
I think what you said about delivery services, that there are a lot of specialized delivery services that are really taking off right now that are going to take the place of a, a specialty store that you would go to because what's happening is people are getting used to, okay, order it today. It'll be here in two days. They're, they're able to delay gratification by a couple days because they have to. And so like there's a site called Beverage Universe. Did you know beverageuniverse.com? You get any kind of soda delivered right to your door. Huh. Well, you can't get soda at the thing. And, and if you like a specialized kind of, you know, diet soda or, or something, um, or just you want some soda, you can go to beverageuniverse.com or beverages direct. And there are all these places that we, like we started getting these things. Um, it's called, it's not called the leftovers. It's ugly. Sun. It's basically ugly produce. Oh yeah. I've seen that. It's yeah. pro, it's amazing, dude. It's ugly pieces, of, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, it doesn't, wouldn't look good, you know, in the, in the pyramid of tomatoes. Right. But well, you, when we got it. Yeah. You know what, when you think about that, you know, basically that is probably some farm taking out the middleman. Oh yeah. And doing the distribution distribution themselves. And that's where yes. delivery services can really make an impact and be the distributor to the individual versus direct to the consumer. To, yeah. That's yeah. really that's, bad. That, that is the future of farming, I bet you. But I think about all the other things now when people are sitting at home and they have to figure out how to get the things, the services, the goods, the whatever that they can't get the way they used to going down to the middleman. The yeah. grocery store is the middleman. Yeah. The, the Walmart's the middleman. The electronics store like Best Buy is the middleman. Sure. And I think that's, if you think about anywhere, if you're analyzing anything, Who's the middleman? And is the middleman a location or is the middleman uh, an app, just like you said? Is the middleman uh, a site? Is it, is what, who is the middleman? And is that middleman going to, or excuse me, middle person? Who's the middle person? Um, the middle being yes. in this whole thing. And is that middleman either, is, is this going to make that stronger or is it going to make it weaker or not even necessary anymore because people don't need to do it? Right. You know, we, we went to the grocery store today to pick up some stuff that we couldn't get any other way, but man, we were in and out. It, it was not screwing around. It wasn't a social thing. It wasn't a, a recreational thing. It was a, holy crap, you know, get a, you know, it was, it was, you know, dodging the germs down the aisle and, you know, <laughs> And uh, it just, that's the kind of thing that, that creating opportunities. I personally think that Netflix, and maybe they already do this, but I can't figure out how to do it. But I think if there was a video service where you could tee up a movie and also incorporate, like if you and I wanted to watch a movie, like you and I were bros and it was like, hey, Stu, let's watch Red Dawn this afternoon at three o'clock. We'll kick back. I can see you watching it. You can see me watching it. And we're watching it together and we can holler at the screen and talk smack back and forth. I think that kind of a thing could really kick ass. Maybe mm. not with you and me, but like I really miss my grandsons. Yeah. I, if Disney Plus had a way for us to watch a movie together and I knew they were watching it and I was watching it at the same time and we were like, yeah. And even just seeing them watching it while I was watching, even if we weren't talking, I think would be amazing. And, and maybe there's some, tell me in the comments if you know if there's a function or something that already does that. But I just, I think that would be really, really, really super cool. And I, I'm probably not alone. And, and I mean, if somebody invented that, you know, I don't, I don't even know how watch parties work on Facebook or nothing, but I mean, you see what I mean? Just that just would be thinking. fun. That'd be almost like your own little mystery science theater. Do you remember that? Yeah, show? Uh, that was fun. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, that that was some hilarious stuff. Twilight Zone yeah. was really good, and then the the new Twilight Zone and the third yeah. Twilight Zone and and all that stuff. So, I just I I I've been thinking about that a lot lately. Not enough to try and solve it. I just want yeah. somebody to figure it out or yeah. you know hotwire it. 
but I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, so I just, I, I think, you know, the obvious stuff is telecom delivery services and, and, and really thinking how all the stuff that we used to have to do in person, how could that be done more efficiently in, um, over, over like Zoom or, or what we're doing now, but also then, I don't know if this is true or not, but I know I've been feeling about a lot like this lately. I heard you can go three days without, you can go three days without water, three something without, shel without shelter, three weeks without food, but you can only go about 30 days without some sort of human companionship before you start losing your stuff. And, and I think hmm. where we're also going to have to figure out how to have meaningful interactions with people in the real world when this is done too, with, and not let all this going to video and, you know, telecommunications and stuff, how, how can we have meaningful in-person contact with the people that we care about? and also with people we don't know so we can expand our physical circle of friends because friends on Facebook, 99.99%, not your real friends. I wouldn't let anybody, they wouldn't let me stay at their house. You can't stay at my house. It ain't how it works. You know, your, your acquaintances, but how to facilitate meaningful in-person contact with people, uh, I think is something else that we're going to have to re-figure out as a result of this. Yeah, regardless, I mean, anytime there is an event like this or a technology boom like this, um, it causes a disruption, obviously, yeah. in business and schooling and just future, the way we do things. Um, but there's also, when there is a disruption, there's also vulnerabilities and opportunities thrown in there. And you have to look at all of these as is uh, where's your vulnerabilities first, but then also where are your opportunities second, so you can fix any vulnerabilities and then react to potential opportunities that are open to you. And like Jim said, you know, looking at that person in the middle of business, you know, is there a vulnerability there for an entrepreneur to come in and have some of that market share, right? right. Without completely disrupting the you know, the world. Um, but yeah, there's going to be a lot of changes going on between delivery services, education, home gym markets probably going to increase versus going to a big gym, um, home office equipment. You know, it's kind of like the, uh, when the gold rush occurred, people made a lot of money selling shovels, shovels. and picks, yep. you know, and liquor. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you know and, and that changed travel i mean people started traveling all the way across the country you know and uh just like all... the internet and, and the interstate highway system changed everything yeah yeah so go government admin will probably change a bit i i would imagine um well, religious one last services, thing everything so well yeah. and let's and one last thing to talk about how do you think this is going to change people's behavior and attitudes and beliefs that's something else. And, and will it ever go back? I, I remember, you know, 9-11 was a terrible, was a terrible thing. Ugh. And I remember, though, that we all came together as a country better than I've ever seen in my entire lifetime. That was nice. People flew the flag. People were kind. They, everybody, we were in this together. And over the years, that attitude has fractured and that's why we don't talk about politics. We only talk about puppies. Yep. Um, but I, I hope and pray that we get some out of this where people feel compassion and empathy towards their fellow man. And, and this, this lasts, this feeling of helping others. I think we're going to see, a, I think one thing we'll see is if even a fraction of the people can keep the habit of hand cleaning and no face touching and and not getting up in people's grill i think you will see an effect of of less disease moving forward less communicable disease for a while oh, yeah. and i hope that sticks yeah i'm a clean freak now 
Yeah. I mean, I, I, mean, I was never, I mean, I washed my hands before I ate, but it wasn't something I did every time I walked outside and inside and yeah, you know, yeah. So there, there's going to be, that's going to be one of those six degrees effects that I think yeah. is going to happen over, over the years as well. So very interesting. You're, you're, you're a deep thinking dude, Stu. Well, thank you. You know, I'm not always just this pretty face. I know. With the, with the, with the, with the, with the brush. The rouge. Yeah. With the, with that. <laughs> no, that was good. <laughs> Talking about disruption and stuff. Um, you're absolutely right. So we, we shall see. So, Appreciate you guys and I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, we went live to do the, the, uh, the podcast episode. If you are not a member of the Jim Edwards uh, Method Premium, you should be. You can go out and check out the Jim Edwards Method.com. If you are not a member of our Facebook group, the Sales Copywriting Content Marketing Hacks uh, Facebook group, that's absolutely free to join. It's a closed group. We teach and help people with their sales copy, their messaging, with their content marketing, all things creating value for others and persuading them ultimately to buy, try, subscribe, or click. And um, if you want to get in good shape, you need to go check out stusmithfitness.com. Uh, Stu absolutely changed my life as far as fitness. I've been working with Stu now for what, six years, six, seven years? Yeah, yeah. Um, Stu helped me get in the best shape of my life and uh, actually has me in the point now where I look forward to doing workouts that other people would say, you did what? You're crazy. <laughs> so that's I, I get that a lot. Um, but here's something else too. If you're not used to seeing these podcasts, which, you know, we're doing it live here in the, in Jim's um, Facebook page, um, you can get them all at YouTube, Sales Copy Content Marketing Hacks Podcast. Also on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play. They are also in audio version there. So there are over 60 of these uh, podcasts that you can find and uh, check them out because Jim really gets into some really helpful business information for you. Cool. Awesome. Appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. Everybody have a wonderful day and we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye, everybody.